Star Wars has been the poster child for space opera for a while. However, since the Disney takeover, the franchise has stumbled off the stage, and that throne is now unoccupied. There's a Death Star-sized hole right now, with very little competition in the genre. It's true. I've liked some of the entries and downright hated some of the others, but none of them have been able to claim the cultural significance that Star Wars once did. The Shroud of the Dark Side has fallen. However, that claim may come from an unlikely source, Warhammer 40k. When most people hear about Warhammer 40k, they think of miniature war toys or some obscure video game series that the community has refused to forget. I've always been vaguely aware of the board game and other media and the dedicated fanbase, but never enough to actually pay attention. I just assumed it was another weird insular community obsessed with mediocre fiction. That was until I came across this. Now, at the time, I had no idea what was going on here, whose side I was supposed to be on, or what any of these scenes meant. I just knew that it was cool as f So, I did a little digging, and I was blown away when I found out that this video was made by a fan. It led me down a rabbit hole of other cool and hardcore videos and other media, all leisurely made by fans. So I thought to myself, what sort of IP drives its community to be so dedicated? So, I took a closer look at the lore and the mythos of the world, and yeah, I totally get it. It may be, pound for pound, one of the greatest IPs ever made, and the true successor to Star Wars. One of the things to immediately get out of the way with 40k is that it's a setting, not a story. It was not created to be the background around a certain story, for example, like Lord of the Rings, but to be a setting in which new stories could be told, none of which needed to link to each other. Once you have a rough overview of the 40k universe, you can dip in anywhere, as long as you don't directly contradict other stories already told. The setting is 40,000 years into the future, where things are dark indeed. Human civilization has stopped progressing and is locked in an unending war with multiple genocidal factions. When they're not fighting against each other, they're fighting amongst themselves. Sometimes they fight with each other just to avoid fighting themselves. Just endless war. Wars fueled by survival, fear, faith, and ambition, and of course, good old xenophobia. Armed conflict has been perfected, and it's genocide versus revenge genocide most of the time. To be a man in such times is to be one amongst untold billions constantly at risk of extermination or worse. It is to live in the cruelest and most bloody regime imaginable. 40k boasts a vast and expansive lore, spanning millennia and delving into countless factions, characters, and events. Let's do a quick rundown of the major factions so you can follow. The humans make up the Imperium of Man, a dominant militaristic and theocratic empire ruling over a million inhabited planets, once much more glorious, but now struggling to maintain control over a vast crumbling empire spanning millions of planets. There's a race of skeleton-like androids known as the Necron, ancient robotic race with a mysterious origin predating humanity, a desire to reclaim their lost empire, and a grudge against everything organic. They're masters of advanced technology and capable of reanimating their dead. They are soulless, relentless, and unforgiving in their pursuit of dominance. There's a race of elves known as the Aeldari, a highly advanced and super psychic race that perfected battle and life, basically but their excess hedonism and debauchery led to accidentally creating a god of hedonism and debauchery, which all but destroyed them. It's a long story, they're now scattered in settlements across the galaxy. There's also orcs, with a K. These guys are a brutal and warlike greenskin race, bred to love violence and combat. They ravage the galaxy and are extremely good at war, but are usually not the sharpest axe in the armory, so to speak, they exist to wage war on anything that moves, including themselves. Then there's Tyranids, who are just nightmare fuel. They form a hive-minded, bio-engineered alien race that devours entire worlds in its evolutionary path. They come from a void unknown outside of the galaxy and seek to consume all biological matter in everywhere they can find it. Think about them in those aliens in Edge of Tomorrow, but bigger, badder, more crustacean, and bloodthirsty. 
The Tau are a blue-skinned alien race that are rather young and tolerant. They have risen at lightning pace and have grown to challenge the Imperium with their advanced technology and completely harmonious societies. Finally, we have the forces of Chaos. The Chaos Gods are elementals with limitless energy, who have only been fed by the constant warring and strife in the cosmos. Now, this is not in any way detailed or exhaustive. I'm pretty sure there's a Warhammer fan out there upset at my oversimplifications as the world is far more nuanced than vast. Warhammer 40k, from what I can gather, it's a really complex world that started out as a satire of fascism and war, just like Star Wars. They both share some thematic and narrative DNA, both featuring spacefaring empires, advanced technology, and epic battles. However, their execution diverges significantly. Star Wars presents a clear good versus evil struggle with a hopeful anti-oppression message and all that. In contrast, 40k fully embraces its grim dark tone, where hope is fleeting and victory often comes at a brutal cost. The galaxy is a dangerous and unforgiving place and everyone has embraced a life of killing others. Deal with it. But then, I am reminded that the Star Wars Extended Universe did do other stuff. They did heists, grimdark, war, spies, and espionage, horror, eldritch horror, body horror. Unfortunately, it was butchered by XX who do not care for originality or the IP. But the difficult themes of Warhammer 40k cannot be avoided, and that challenging narrative has attracted those seeking a darker, more mature space opera experience. Advanced technology exists alongside religious fanaticism, creating a unique blend of science and superstition. Characters grapple with loss, corruption, and the struggle to maintain their ideals in a harsh galaxy. There's no peace among the stars, only an eternity of carnage and slaughter. I love their policy about their law too. It's very fluid. Things get retconned here and there, or reintroduced, but ultimately, every piece of it is someone's tellings of events from a small corner of a very large world. It leaves room for authors and the company to pick and choose pieces they want to work with or exclude without it being a whole crack in the overall story. And since Warhammer started as a tabletop game first and foremost, they focused on letting people have their own lore and basically saying, look, as long as you don't conflict with this preset stuff, whatever you want to be lore is the lore. Star Wars is of course not a small universe, even by comparison with 40k, but it's kind of closed in a way. This has caused some challenges in maintaining narrative coherence after multiple movies. 40k constantly evolves with new stories, games, and media expanding its universe. Even the humans in the world literally evolve biologically and psycho-spiritually. This ongoing development keeps the setting fresh and engaging for its dedicated fanbase. It also makes it extremely malleable to adaptation in different media. As long as it sticks to themes and doesn't create continuity errors by misrepresenting core events and principles, they should be able to tell the story anyhow, anywhere, anywhen. Another thing I prefer about 40k over Star Wars is the in-universe logistics. The magic system is many layers thick, yet easy to pass. The galaxy seems larger and generally difficult to navigate. Want to travel to this one system? Well, the warp is not great right now. You'll get there in 800 years only. Or you could go through a wormhole and arrive before you even left. Or you arrive when the war you were headed to has been resolved and they had ushered in an age of peace. Well, peace my foot. I came for holy combat, and I've been in cryosleep for 800 years. I will get my war, one way or another. I'm a huge fan of the over-the-top chunky armor that's come to be synonymous with Warhammer 40k. It actually serves as proper armor too, and not the styrofoam stuff troopers wear. Those suits look very difficult to take off though, and would be hilarious to reproduce in live action. Unfortunately, a live action version could never realistically happen as the budget would have to be massive and the appeal just isn't there on a grand scale. Or so I thought. We got some news from Amazon Studios that they're working on Warhammer movies and TV series with scriptwriters already active. Henry Cavill is set to become both an actor and executive producer in this. To have this opportunity to bring it to the screen and be at the tiller so it can be faithful is is key he loves passion projects he already brought the witcher to life another complex and lore intense world who many said would be too big for tv amazon seems to have the right ideas although there's a curse that movies and series based on video games tend to have 
The vastness of some of these worlds is really tough to capture on screen and in limited time. We've had some really bad ones, but many of them are quite watchable and end up successful too. Foundation, for example, was something I didn't think they could pull off until they did, and it had a super vast world and narrative spanning millennia. But still, this is an ambitious move for Amazon, as Warhammer 40k is a lot more vast and epic in scale than these, and it combines all the extreme elements of sci-fi and fantasy. But if successful, it could introduce us to some really peak fiction, and hopefully get people to see it for the awesomeness that it is. There's always the fear that the studio will babyfy the entire setting, so it appeals to the widest possible audience, which means the original intended audience is not going to enjoy it. This, most recently, happened with Halo, which by the way, would fit snugly into the Warhammer 40k universe. But one can only have faith that Amazon would stick to source material, like they have with other shows. I really think that Warhammer, if managed right and not butchered by top management or palatability, can seize that throne.